happy oh. birthday on their birthday, so. <laughs> Well, and they made you a really nice breakfast this morning, I saw. They did. I was absolutely spoiled. I had breakfast made for me. I had dinner made for me by some other teammates and cake and a day off and all of the things. So it was it's been an awesome day. And now I get to finish it with you guys. Hopefully <laughs> we can get some good questions. We'll share a little bit about me and uh, hopefully every, everybody can take something away from tonight. And if everybody's okay with it, we are going to record this. So just let us know if anybody has any issues. And for anybody arriving, um, please put your name and your division in the chat so we can add your name to the draw at the end. Should we give it one more minute and then start it up? Yeah. Okay, well, might as well get started. So um, Victoria is gonna chat with us. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can either, you, I think there's a little hand button that you can put up that shows a hand um, on your screen or you can put a question into the chat and we can grab it from there as well. Uh, so yeah, take it away, Victoria. Awesome. Well, hello everyone. So excited to be here tonight with you guys and, and share a little bit about um, my softball playing journey. It's still going. I, I started playing um, 21 years ago, which is crazy, um, but still playing, still representing Canada and um, still loving it as much as I did when I was your guys' age. So that's the most important part. But um, as Corey said, if you guys have questions, don't feel bad about interrupting me ask a question if you want to unmute and go for it if you want to um, throw it in the chat I'll be checking it but um, don't feel bad I I'm here to help you guys so however I can do that that's the reason I'm here and and I'll just share a little bit about me um, I am Victoria Hayward and I'm on the Canadian national team I'm the captain of our team I play outfield um, and I am our leadoff hitter so that's something I feel like when people ask me my position I I I take a lot of pride in my hitting. That's the thing I love about the game the most. I, I'm our lead off, which is um, really important to me and a, and a role I take super seriously. But I was born in Toronto and um, I moved to California, not by choice. Believe me, if it was my choice, I would have stayed in Canada forever. But my parents moved, moved me when I was eight years old. Um, and I started playing softball, soccer, volleyball, all these, a whole bunch of sports. I played every single sport that I could um, get my hands on. I skied everything and um, just played in my local community. That's how I grew up, just playing with girls I went to school with, playing against boys in recess and all of that stuff. So that's kind of where I started to become an athlete was just with the people in my neighborhood and my local community team. And I was super competitive. I just loved competing and loved learning, loved trying new things. And um, I really only started to play competitive softball when I was 12. So um, some of you guys are probably even ahead of me in the game, just at the level that you're competing at. Once I was kind of 12 or 13, I started to take softball a little bit more seriously. We would travel a little bit, maybe like more than 10 minutes to the local field we'd maybe drive half an hour or or go play uh people in the neighboring town but my softball started to get a little bit more competitive um but I was also playing soccer so I played softball and soccer up through high school so if you guys love multiple sports continue to play multiple sports I think that's why that's a huge reason I am where I am today is because I always 
did a lot of different things and I was coached by a lot of different people and I had to learn a lot of different skills that have really helped me as I've gotten older and as I've um, just continued to play the game. So um, I went to high school, I was still playing both sports and um, at age 16, I was invited to try out for the junior national team. They were having a camp uh, in Victoria, BC and it was to send a team over to Europe. And I had never been to Europe um, and I was, they were taking two of the girls my age. So I'm a 92, which sounds very old from what you guys are, but it's okay. uh, I was a 92. And so they took two, they were taking two people. They were taking two position people and they, they wanted to take a pitcher and a catcher. So I used to be a pitcher. And so they were like, who's this girl that's living down in California? We'll, we'll invite her up. And you know what? You're coming for the junior team. We're going to keep you for the senior team just to see if you're a good softball player. We don't know. We don't get to see who you are all the time in the field um, in BC, like they saw the other girls. So I went to this tryout and I did okay. It wasn't anything special. Um, I pitched, I pitched okay. I wasn't a great pitcher, AKA I gave that up a while ago and I, uh, started playing outfield a little bit more, but I pitched, I thought I did okay. And I ended up not making the team. So failure there didn't make the junior team. And so the coach was still like, Hey, we want you to come to the senior team just to see you're already here. Why not? And so what was my mindset? Like I had nothing to lose, right? I had already not made that junior team. So all I went, I went to that senior camp and I said, I'm going to try to learn a lot. I'm going to have fun. I remember my dad dropping me off um, at the school for a week long. I was staying um, with some of the older girls who had been Olympians. And I was just like, wow, I'm going to learn so much. And, and I played so free because I had no expectations of myself. I didn't think I was going to make it. I just went and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be the best me. I'm going to try to learn. I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I had an amazing tryout. I had one of the best weeks of softball I could have asked for. And I ended up making that team. So I was 16 and I was the youngest person ever named to the national team. Um, and since then, every single summer, um, I've had the opportunity to wear the maple leaf on my chest and it's been one of the most incredible opportunities of my life. And I cherish it so much. And I think about um, young ladies like you every single time I get to go on the field. So it's something I, it, it means a lot to me and it's been a huge part of my softball journey. Um, and that kind of moment, that first time I had the opportunity to to compete for Team Canada was kind of the first time I was like, wow, softball could open up some doors for me. This is pretty cool. This is pretty special. This is different than what a lot of the kids my age are doing. And so um, that summer I was teammates with two of my teammates who are still my teammates and uh, they cooked me dinner tonight for my birthday. They're amazing. Danielle Laurie and Jen Salling. And they were in college at the time playing at the University of Washington. And I was not committed to a college at that time. Um, I was very focused on my academics. So I wasn't really focused too much on playing softball in college. I wanted to make sure I went to a really good school to get that really good education that I was going to use when I got a normal job after college. Yet here I am still playing softball and not using that degree in the slightest, but you still got to get it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted, and they were like, you know what? You got to come to Washington. You got to come to Washington. Come play with us. Our school's awesome. You'll love it. And um, I went, once I went to go visit, I was pretty convinced. I said, this place is great. It is a really great academic school, which was important to me. It was an awesome softball school. It was in a super cool city. I fell in love with Seattle. And um, it was close enough for my family in Vancouver to come down and watch a game, as well as close enough on the West Coast for my family from California to be able to come see. So it, it checked all those boxes. And I had an awesome career there. I had so much fun. Um, we went to the Women's College World Series, which was really important to us, and um, I graduated in four years, which was, which was um, really special. Um, all throughout that time, I was still playing for Team Canada, so I was always flipping jerseys and, and running from one place to the other. Um, and after that, um, I went to a whole bunch of other places. I have feel like I've traveled the United States softball world by, by playing softball. I was a graduate assistant at LSU, which is in Louisiana, um, where I started pursuing 
graduate school. So I have a graduate degree in business from the University of Massachusetts where I used to coach. So then I went up to Massachusetts for two years. Um, I coached at the University of Maryland for two years. And then we had this all the time playing on the national team. And in 2016, our national team worked really hard to show, try to show the world that we thought softball was really important and we wanted it to be in the Olympics. So we had these campaigns, we would play at our world championships and we'd try to post photos of our teams from different countries banding together. Um, I remember we wrote 2020 in softballs and took a picture with Team Japan, Team Australia and Team Canada, Team USA, and just try to get the word out about softball and how it's so awesome and it needed to be in the Olympics. And, and it was something that if people saw it, it was gonna be really great. So for the next few years, we just really worked on trying to get our sport back into the Olympics. And so when it finally was named back in the Olympics, um, I was at kind of a crossroads. Um, I'd always had a job and coaching softball. So I was always balancing a lot of things. Like I balanced school and softball. And then when I graduated, I balanced school, softball and work. And so the Olympics were something really, really special. And there, you see it when you watch it on TV and it's incredibly powerful. And so I knew that it was going to be my one opportunity to make a name for myself, make Team Canada history as a team that could, that could potentially win a gold medal. First, no um, Canadian women's team has ever won a gold medal. So that's, that's our goal for Tokyo. And we knew we, we had a chance. And so I was really like, if I want to do this, I think I have to be all in. So I can't try to balance all of these things. I need this to be my number one focus. And so um, in 2020, in 2018, I, I made a decision to step away from full-time coaching and pursue a part-time job, um, still dealing with softball because um, it helped me just stay in shape and stay close to the game. But then I just decided that this was it and I, I needed to be all in and do whatever I could to be the best softball player I could be. And so I, I decided to step away from work entirely and just be a professional athlete. Um, as a woman, it's not necessarily as glamorous as the people we see on TV too often, but um, I love softball. I think it's awesome. It makes me a better person. It's super challenging. Um, and I've had the opportunity to now be a, a full-time professional. It's the only thing I'm doing um, for almost a year and a half now. So we're training now, um, obviously 2020 threw a wrench into everybody's plans. I know, I'm sure you guys were off the softball team, off the softball field for quite a long time. So were we, um, I had, excuse me, I had the opportunity to help start a new professional softball league. So that's one of my passions is um, I helped create a league called Athletes Unlimited, where people have the opportunity to pursue a life as a professional athlete and get a living wage and um, help do that. And now our team is in Florida training and competing and getting better every single day. So we're ready to win gold in, in Japan in just over a hundred days. We've got a countdown, but 100 days until the Olympics and until our team's going to be able to, to show you guys what we've really got. So um, that's my general career in a nutshell. Um, it's a lot of different things, but fortunately a lot of it has revolved around being on this team and that's a, it's a huge part of my life. Um, do you guys have any questions so far? Has anything popped in? You guys asleep yet? No? I see some smiling faces. I'll ask a question. Awesome, Corey. So how many how many of you actually get to go to the Olympics on the team? Like there's 18 training. Mm -hmm. How many actually get chosen? 15 will get chosen. So it's a pretty small, for, for softball players at our level, it's a pretty small roster. Um, so you have to be able to do a lot of things. You have to be really versatile um, to make that 15 people stretch really far. So we have 18 people right now and we will be, narrowing it down to 15 um, that will travel to, to Tokyo and represent Canada. So we're still in a trial process. We've been trying out for this final team now because of COVID for almost 
a year and a half. It's the longest tryout anyone's ever had in their lives, but it'll, it's challenging us in a lot of different ways. And it'll be worth it. Um, so one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, what it, what it takes to get to the next level. So whatever that level is for you, maybe it's getting up to club ball, or maybe it's a little bit later and, and competing at a higher age group or whatever the next level is gonna be for you guys. Um, the number one thing is your work ethic. And this ex most of what I'm gonna talk to you guys about extends to not only just softball, but anything you wanna do. Anything you wanna do, whether it's another sport, whether it's something in school, whether it's learning a musical instrument, whether it's dance, whether it's whatever. Almost everything I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is really just about life. And that's how, um, that's what I've learned over the last little bit is almost everything you learn in softball has nothing to do with softball. It's about all the other stuff that goes on in your life. But number one, you gotta be ready, you gotta be ready to work hard. And a lot of people think that they're working hard but you don't really know if you're working hard until you're around other people. So you always want to surround yourself with people that are better than you. So if you're the best person on your team, go try to find another team or go train with somebody that's better than you or go practice with someone that's better than you at whatever you're doing. Um, and you have to be ready to train on your own. That's the hardest part about learning and growing and practicing and all this stuff is because a lot of it has to be done on your own or when no one's watching. So what does that mean? That means that sometimes you got to be, you got to ask your parents to go to the field, maybe when after work or something like that, you got to find time in your schedule. Because if, if you're going to do anything in life, you can't just do the bare minimum because you're not going to be as good as you want to be or reach your full potential. So um, we barely spend any of our time in practice. Most of our practice happens outside of practice as with anything, but um, the amount of training I do, I've, I've done at the current level or when I was at your guys' age, um, definitely more than just practice, practice isn't enough, but also I think it's really important just to be mindful of when you're practicing. Like I remember when I was younger, my dad would always force me to practice, force me to practice, force me to practice, force me to practice. It was always my dad wanting me to practice, not necessarily me wanting me to practice. And so one day he was like, if you don't want to do it, I'm not going to force you anymore. You have to want to do this. And that moment was a huge part in my life because then I started to want to do practice and I started wanting to own my development. So that's a super important thing. You have to want to get better for yourself not for your coach, not for your parents, not for your friends. You have to want to get better because you want to be better in every single way. So you should be bugging your parents or bugging your sister or your brother to be like, hey, come play with me, come play catch with me, or hey, can you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with this? If it's really your passion, that's how you're going to get to the next level. That's how you're going to become a better softball player. That's how you're going to get better in everything that you do. Um, because the bare minimum just isn't, it isn't enough because everyone's doing the bare minimum. So you're just going to be average in that. And that's, um, you know, you'll never figure out how good you could really be. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. I took notes for this because you guys are. Um, and one more thing on that. You got to figure out why you love what you're doing. I think that's, that's kind of one of the most important parts about when you guys are this age. Think about like why you love softball or why you love whatever you love to do, why you love spending time with your friends or why you love, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok. Are you guys on TikTok? Good. Don't waste your brain on it. Don't even go there. Um, but why you love doing the things that you're doing. And I think that will help you kind of understand how you can continue to progress in them. So um, you have to love the process. You have to love the stuff when it's hard. Our sport is so hard. Softball is tough. Softball, you fail a ton. You're going to have like months where you don't get a single hit or months where you can't strike anybody out. And you have to find 
what you love in those moments. So maybe you love being with a team and playing with your friends and all that. Then you got to love that when it's fun, when it's hard, all of those times, you have to love that. If you love the feeling of when the bat hits the ball, when you love that feeling, you have to love that feeling even if you get a hit or if you hit it foul. When you love the pop of the mitt or whatever that is, whatever you love about the game, that has to be your constant. So during this whole time, you guys have been missing so much softball, right? You're supposed to have a season last year. I know it's tough to get on the field now just with so much stuff going on in the world still, but just think about what you miss. Think about what you miss and what you're looking, what you're looking forward to getting back to because that's the stuff that matters and that's the stuff that you should keep on doing, whether it's softball or whether it's something else because not, not every single person on this screen is going to be going to play until they're 29 and be a professional softball player. But some of you guys might be. Some of you guys might be some pretty awesome other stuff too. Someone on the screen could go on and go to Juilliard and be an amazing opera singer. We don't know. I have no idea. But whatever you're going to do, find what you love and just keep doing that. And you'll, you'll be pretty unstoppable in your life. Do you guys have any questions on that piece? All right, I'll, I'll answer. You got Jeff, Rachel, and Amy. I love that we got all the names on the screen. Hi, Amy, I said hi to Rachel earlier. Um, so they asked, what does a typical day in camp, what does a typical day in camp look like for you? So a typical day, right now so we're in florida training and um our days are pretty long because when we get we're training for tokyo and it's really hot in tokyo and it's going to be really long days here so we're trying to build up stamina and be in the heat and all that stuff so um right now we're usually waking up at 7 30. um we're making breakfast i like to cook breakfast for my roomies um and because they make my lunch. Know your strengths, know your strengths. My strengths are not in lunch making, my strengths are in breakfast making. So double down on your strengths. Um, make breakfast, go to the field for around 9.30 or 10 and we do warm up. We usually have kind of a double day practice. So we'll practice for two hours, we'll take a lunch break at the field um, and then either go to the weight room and lift or do another two hour practice. And then um, go home and we'll do a lot of video review of practice or um, watching the game. Like we just played a game yesterday. So a lot of us will watch that game on video and start to critique anything that we were doing wrong or just think about things we can be better at. Cause that's all we're trying to do is just be a little bit better than we were the day before. So we'll analyze some film and talk about it either just in our houses or we'll, we'll hop on a Zoom just like this and, and talk about how we can be better as a team. And then a lot of it is um, recovery. So we have to take care of our bodies. As I was sitting here, I have like, I have these little patches on my arm and I've got like a little stim going on trying to revive my arm back to life. So not, none of you will understand that. And that's amazing. Stay healthy forever. Um, but it's all about recovery, getting sleep, drinking a ton of water, eating a good meal, and then doing it all again the next day. So Usually we're going six days a week with one day off, which was today because we played a couple games yesterday. Um, but it'll really vary. We're heading into a really light week. We're kind of doing a recovery week this week, which will be great. Some of us will get to see some family and kind of refill our gas tank a little bit, and then we'll hit it back and, and we'll go for a few weeks um, of those double days, six days a week. We have a question here. Just, I wish I knew how to pronounce your name. Can you? He's going to mute. Uh, Deschanel Donovan. Deschanel. Hi. Uh, What's your question? What, uh, what age were you when your dad made you make a choice that it was either he was going to push you or you were going to practice? That's a great question. Um, I was about 13 or 14. Um, because I was a pitcher at that point and he was asking me to practice and telling me that I needed to pitch. And I was like, yeah, I know I need to pitch. I will. But I was never really doing it on my own. And so I, I kind of realized at that point that I didn't think I loved pitching. And I was just doing it because I was the pitcher before and that 
it was something that I was good at, but I didn't really love it. Um, and I wanted to practice other things. So instead of just continuing to, I call it checking the box, instead of just continuing to check the box and be a pitcher because my dad wanted me to be a pitcher, I decided to start pouring into what I loved, which was hitting and base running. And I was a slapper and, and figuring out my offense. And that's in the end, what I've been really good at because I loved it so much. But that's a great question. I've honestly never been asked that question. So I love that you asked that. Thank you. Does that help at all? Yeah. Okay, another question we've got. Amy, what do you love about the sport of softball? I love so many things. I mean, I, I love competing. Like I will compete driving to the field. I will drive better, not necessarily faster, but I will be, I will take the most strategic route. Um, I will pick up the balls faster than you. I will do, I will make anything a competition. Um, so I love competing and I love that softball is hard because as a real competitor, if it's always easy, you kind of lose that love for it. So um, because it's hard and it's always a challenge and it causes me to think, I have to plan, um, I have to kind of use my brain a little bit. Um, that challenge keeps it very interesting to me. And there's always something to learn. You never are kind of the best. You're always having to keep learning, keep pushing yourself, keep fine tuning your skills. And so I love doing all of that work and then getting to celebrate the moments with my teammates because ultimately playing a team sport is so cool. And I, I love the chance to, to live here in Florida for a few months with, with teammates I've never had the chance to live with. So we just get to work super, super hard and then go beat up on some other team and share some joy when we each get to see the things that we're working on. That's the best part about um, being together as a team is Throughout that whole journey that I was describing, I was always off doing my own thing. And then during the summer, we would get together to compete. So whether I was at Washington competing in college or I was working at the University of Maryland, I was always kind of on my own doing my work and then coming together during the summer. And so now for the first time, we're all together as a group during every single practice, every single moment. And so you see the highs, you see the lows, you see people working on things, you see people overcoming things, you see, um, you see all of it. So I think that's, that's what's helping make the journey so fulfilling is other people's successes are your successes, your successes are other people's successes. And um, that's ultimately just, our, our sport's hard. You guys never, never forget that our sport is so hard and so you got to cherish every little success because you don't know when the next one's going to come what inspired you to begin playing competitive ball at age 12 or 13 um it's so funny because I, my parents, our family did not know what we were doing. I'm the oldest child. I have a younger brother. Um, and so we, we didn't know anything about the world of competitive sports. My dad was um, a Formula One driver as well as a, as a ski racer, a really competitive ski racer. So we only knew what ski racing, how you moved up the ladder. We had no idea about softball, soccer, any of this other stuff. Um, and so it was really, I made an all-star team in my club level. and then. People are like, well, why aren't you playing? Why aren't you playing child ball? Why aren't you playing competitive ball? And we were like, what's competitive? This is, we're competing here. What's competitive ball? It was like we had no idea what we were missing. And so then, the coach of an all-star team introduced me to somebody else. So it wasn't because um, I didn't want to. It was just kind of we weren't exposed to that or kind of even ready to start traveling at such a young age. The demands are so high and and um, I was totally fine waiting until that age and just developing my own skills in, in my backyard with my dad. So um, just started playing competitively because I was ready for the next step. But um, from then on, I was hooked. It was, it was so fun playing at that next level and being challenged in that way. Gina, question, have you won any, any award, rewards or awards? 
Um, I have won a few awards. Um, I can share some of the ones I was most proud of individually. I mean, the best moment of my softball career was was qualifying for the Olympics in 2019 with my teammates. We played in Softball City um, on the field that we kind of call our home field, although we don't get to play there enough. It feels like we're never there. Um, but qualifying, that was my favorite softball moment. Um, that was kind of a reward in itself. But um, that year I was named the Softball Canada athlete of the year so that was pretty special and I felt like that kind of brought all of that together having qualified and that one meant a lot to me and then uh, most recently um, I played in the athletes unlimited season against players from all over all over the world um, competing individually in kind of a softball team uh, aspect and I won third place in that so that was pretty special beating beating some of those American Olympians which which was hopefully a little nudge of what's to come in July but it was super competitive softball and um I got to to help get better for my team here um for our Canadian team so that was pretty fun um Another topic I want to hit on as we can wait for some more questions to pop up in the chat, but um, I want to talk about a little bit about how, what softballs helped me with in life. Cause right. I said, softballs, whatever you're going to do in life, there are a lot of common themes, right? So what does softball help me with as an adult? So I'm 29. I just turned 29 today. Um, how has it helped me in my life, in the things that I'm doing, in who I am as a human, um, who I am in my relationships and all that thing. And I think the number one thing is confidence. So confidence, I think, can often be rooted in the things we do, how we are as a softball player. Was I a good softball player today? Did I get a hit today? Did I perform well today? I think as we're growing up, it's very easy to get caught up in those results. And we feel bad about ourselves when we have a bad day. We feel great when we had a really good day. And it's kind of that roller coaster. And then as we talked about, our sport is so hard, right? Like it's hard to have a really good day. It's hard to be perfect. You can never be perfect. It's impossible. And so I think as I've grown in softball, I've, I've become much more confident in who I am and my ability to separate those and know who Victoria Hayward is on the softball field and who she is as a softball player, but then who just Vic is in the dugout. Who's Vic as a teammate? Who's Vic as just a friend and as a sister and as all of those things? So um, I think that is one of the hardest things we face in sport and playing a sport of failure is how do you separate your performance from who you are? So it doesn't matter if you went 0 for 100, you never got a hit for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean you're a failure. It might mean softball is not your best thing. You might be the opera singer that nobody knows about. Maybe we need to try something else or maybe, but then if you love it, then it's awesome. And you just keep pursuing it, keep working and the chips will fall. But um, it's really taught me about confidence and how I can become better. So confidence is based on how you prepare. It's based on how you put in your work every single day. It's about how you talk to yourself about that. We all have that little voice inside our head and softball has helped me control that little voice. When I'm having a bad day and it's like, Vic, come on, you're better than that. Gosh, you're so terrible today. Man, your dad, when I was younger, it would be like, wow, dad's gonna be pretty pissed. <laughs> or the car ride home is gonna be a little bit awkward because you didn't play well. Um, becoming aware of that and changing that second thought. So sometimes we have that first thought and it's kind of like not a, not so nice. The, the faster we can make that second thought something positive or something that puts us into a better headspace, the better we're gonna be in just life. So I think that controlling that little voice and having better self-talk and just kind of being able to, to believe in yourself and rely on that confidence is so big. and. I actually used to write some of those things down. So 
if I had a really great day, I would write it down. I would write down what it felt like. I would write down all the things I did well. So if I was ever kind of sad or feeling like, man, maybe softball isn't for me. Maybe I'm not this good or whatever. I could go back and see all these awesome things I had done or things that my coaches had said that really made me feel good. And it could get me back like that. So actually, I still have some of the notes that my teammates have written me and people that I really care about have written me about my abilities and who I am. And if I ever kind of stray away from that, I can always go back and, and just get a little confidence boost from, from some of the people that mean a lot to me and, and can kind of help me get my thoughts into a better place. Because I think sometimes we all kind of have those negative thoughts and they're totally okay, but it's just how can we get them, we can think and then reverse it really quickly just to be in a more positive headspace. Okay, we got some questions. Oh, right on cue. We get into a negative headspace. Jeff, Rachel, and Amy. I spoke, I spoke about being not selected for the junior team. So how do you deal with rejection or failure like that? It was definitely not fun. Failure is never fun. And I, I'm a very emotional person. So if, if you ever watch me playing softball, when things are going well, I'm super high. And then sometimes if things are not going so well, I'm getting better. But I, I used to go very low. So when I was first on this team, not being selected to junior team was really tough. I cried about it. I was so sad. I was embarrassed. Um, I was like, why did I come? I was very, I call this, anytime someone goes like this, I call it palms up girl. I was palms up girl. It's like, what am I doing? This is dumb. Why do I play softball? I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and so for me, it was just about flipping it because I had another opportunity. So I had an opportunity in front of me and I could either be pumped up girl, be that sad, oh, it was me person, or I had a completely fresh opportunity to be a completely new person and be high energy, be awesome and just soak it up and learn. So I think that was huge for me in terms of that opportunity was fast. I couldn't do anything about it. But now I could turn it into a positive if I move forward with kind of that free mindset that I talked about. Like I just went in there with nothing to lose and I ended up having a really great experience. But I think it's so key to just continue to not take that stuff so personally. It's so incredibly hard and so much easier said than done. But just because you failed once doesn't mean you're going to fail again. Just because you struck out once in a game doesn't mean your next at-bat's going to be a strikeout. Just because you gave up a home run doesn't mean the next pitch you're going to give up is a home is going to be another home run. But if you start to think like that, then it will be. But once you start thinking about those actions as independent of one another, every single day is an opportunity to do something new. Um, Corey, Paige. When you find out that you've been chosen to go to the Olympics, is there a quarantine period once you arrive in Tokyo? So one of the wild things about this journey is we still have, the only answer I wanna know is like, is it happening? <laughs> um, I think there are so many question marks still in the air. Like as athletes, we're hoping that everyone will have the opportunity to be vaccinated um, before going if we're unable to get it on our own. So I'm hoping that that might be, um, athletes might have a, a pass on the quarantine, assuming that they're vaccinated and they'll be tested and in a safe environment. Um, but truly, I, I think most of these protocols are currently being worked on or, or constantly evolving. And so they don't give us too much of the information, which is probably good because we'd, we'd get way too ahead of ourselves. So um, right now we're really just focusing on, on playing well. We played two games yesterday, which was fun. We're thinking about everyone that couldn't play softball. We got to play two softball games. We wore masks. We played with different balls. We sanitized them. We we did our best to stay socially distant and, and stay safe. But we had the opportunity to play against two college teams. And um, I can't tell you guys how fun it was. We hadn't played a game together in 19 months. And so whenever you get the chance to be back on the field, I hope you guys enjoy the heck out of it and smile and laugh and and even if it's the worst day of your softball career, I hope you can still find a way to have fun because that was what it felt like for us the other day. It didn't matter if we won or lost. It was just being out there um, together, throwing the ball around. It was, um, it felt like we were, we were just starting to play again. So it was really, it was really fun. 
Another question, Sabrina. For your time down in Florida, how did you pick which teammates you were going to stay with? Um, I had them all write essays on why they should be my roommate. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we were, for COVID protocols, we wanted to make sure that, um, God forbid, if anything happened, we weren't a limit. So we, we mixed positions and we mixed different people. So just in case anything were to happen, which we've had no cases, everything's been perfectly fine. We've stayed really safe. Um, so I'm with two pitchers. Um, our third baseman and me as an outfielder. So um, we are just a different group. We're all different ages, um, having fun. And um, it was honestly just, we're together so long that we just wanted to pick people that we really get along with. Cause although we're all teammates, everyone's different. Some people love alone time. Some people love hanging out um, together all the time. So our house is, is pretty social. We've been, we watch a lot of softball on TV. We do a lot of puzzles. We're on like our seventh 1000 piece puzzle. Um, we eat meals together. We sit outside and, and sit in the pool together. We do a lot of stuff together. So I think um, we want it to be with people that filled our buckets because sometimes the days are long and it gets tough and you just want to come home and be around some people that are really positive. And so that's what, that's what our group is here. Um, who is my favorite player? Who did I look up to when I was younger? This is an awesome question. Um, my favorite player right now. Ooh, I don't know who my favorite player right now is. I have a lot of play. I have, I watched so much softball. I ha I could name a hundred favorite players right now. Um, one of my favorite players to watch is actually on Team USA. Um, she's my position on Team USA. Her name is Haley McClenney. Um, she's an exceptional player and um, she's kind of who I see as my competition um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I had the opportunity to play with her in that Athletes Unlimited League I was talking about, which was fun. I got to know her on a personal level. And I think we have a, we have a fun competitive uh, vibe between the two of us. But growing up, I was I grew up before there was so much softball on TV. I'm so jealous of you guys. You guys have so much more exposure to softball players. And I hope um, if I could leave you with anything in this whole call, if you could just take a deep breath, zone in with me for 10 seconds. If you have the opportunity to watch softball on TV, there's a ton on YouTube. You can watch Athletes Unlimited. You can watch NCAA softball. You can watch the Women's College World Series. That is the absolute best thing you could do for your development as a softball player. Julie, you asked this question. It's amazing. You guys should all have a favorite player or favorite players and be able to tell me what you like about them. Do you love the way they hit? Do you love the way that they act on the field? Do you love their routine? Do you love just what do you love about them and how could you emulate them? I think uh, young boys, they often ha they have so many more people that they can look up to. So I looked up to some baseball players when I was younger, just because that's what was on TV and there weren't really too many softball players. Um, I would say my favorite players were at the University of Arizona. That was the only team I ever saw on TV. Um, Autumn Champion and Caitlin Lowe were two slappers at the University of Arizona that were my favorite. I also love Jenny Finch. I used to watch her instructional tapes. They taught me how to pitch. Um, but now there are so many amazing softball players that. Um, from different teams, different positions, different styles, all of that stuff. And um, you can learn so much just by, by watching them compete. Um, do we have to get tested before every game? Um, right now we are testing um, on a regular basis just to be safe. Um, we're tested, I think, two times a week. Um, and then we have no contact with the other team. So we stay very distant and make sure that we're not touching the same I mean, sometimes you have to touch the ball, the same ball, but we're bringing in new balls and, and sanitizing everything in between games or in between innings. Another question, what do I think makes a great outfielder? Um, I think outfield is very underrated to me. Um, and I think at a young age, outfield is kind of looked down upon um or it's it's not as fun it's not as flashy it's not as cool but it's it's pretty important right we've all had that like uh-oh and then like someone's running after the ball and everyone's like oh my god the outfielder has to save the day right we've all had that moment um I think that the the best 
what makes a great outfielder. It's not, it's not always about speed. It's not always about range. Not, it's just that ability to track a ball and it can, it doesn't matter what ball it is. Can you catch a football? Can you catch a little tennis ball thrown in the air? Can you go catch a Frisbee? There's something about just being athletic and being able to track the flight of a ball that sometimes the most athletic infielders, whenever they get to the outfit, they're like, whoa, it's all different here. So the more you can just play catch with a, diff- with a different ball, throw the football around, throw tennis balls, throw big balls, throw little balls. Um, that I think is what makes, they're adaptable. Um, and they, they can deal with kind of the adverse. Sometimes there's wins. Sometimes there's, who knows what you're dealing with on the field. I feel like everyone always cares about the infield being perfect. Sometimes there's like divots in the outfield and it looks like just an absolute mess. You got to be adaptable and just willing, willing to deal with some, some crazy stuff. But, um, I think the best outfielders speed helps a great arm helps all that stuff helps. But I think that natural ability to just track a ball and, Uh, go run after it just kind of like that puppy I was seeing up there on Jeff Rachel and Amy's screen just call them retrievers just go run it all down Um, Julie have you had many injuries in your career I feel super fortunate I have not had very many injuries Um, I did have one major one in 2015 I tore my ACL um, in a squeeze play gone wrong so I had a really big collision I was the runner at third base and I had a really big collision with the catcher of team Puerto Rico and in 2015 and I tore my ACL and partially tore my MCL so it was um, a pretty big injury Uh, I didn't play that summer our team went on to win the first uh, gold medal at Pan Ams without me so that was that was pretty tough Um, so happy for them but to not be there was kind of a huge part of my drive to just continue playing and and want to leave my own mark on the national team and and the success that we've had as a group um and then there's always little nicks and bruises and and all this stuff um as I'm getting older my shoulder it's hurting right now I wouldn't call this an injury but uh, it doesn't feel great right now, but maybe that's just what 29 has in store for me. I'm not sure. Knock on wood. Uh, but no, I've, I've been incredibly fortunate and um, just that main, main injury, but it taught me a lot about myself and, and if I was tough enough and what I was willing to do. So um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was super important to me. Do I have any pregame rituals? Um, not really. I When I was younger, I used to be much more superstitious but um I've played in a whole bunch of different places now um and sometimes we don't know if we're going to have two minutes before the game 10 minutes before the game two hours before the game five hours before the game so I've learned to just let all that stuff go and I just I like to wear a ribbon in my hair and I like to listen to music that's all I got I have a little routine in the box which if you guys ever watch me play you'll see it um but for the most part I like to keep it simple and and just have the I just want my focus to be on the game not on too much of the stuff I'm doing um Kate sent a question to me do you have any off-season training individually if so what routine do you have so we do a ton of off-season training um right now we're technically off-season I guess we just started playing games but we're together as a group which is super exciting so off season, we hit um, about three to four times a week and we strength train three times a week with some conditioning also. Our team takes a crazy amount of pride in our strength and conditioning. Um, we want to be the strongest, most fit team at the Olympics. And so that's definitely a priority in off season. Um, but I didn't start lifting weights or doing any of that stuff until um, until very late in high school or early college. So that's a little bit above your guys's age, but um, I was also playing a lot of different sports. So we did lateral movements. We did a lot of ladders. We did push-ups, sit-ups, all that kind of body weight stuff. So we were definitely working out at a younger age, but I didn't start doing any of the wild stuff you'll see on our Instagrams until, until uh, I got much older. But um, during the off season, it's really about just breaking down your skills. So I'll focus on really, really small things that I want to get better at. Um, And now once we're together in season, it's much more big picture it's about strategy it's about um thinking about the game it's about making adjustments it's about being aware of 
of yourself and your body and what you need. Um, especially like our team's got women who are 35 and women that are 20. So we've got people all over the map. So you need to know your own body and what, and what you need. And Julie, what teams are you playing against now to get ready for the Olympics? Um, so we just played two games against um, the University of Florida, which is one of the best teams in um, college softball. They're incredibly good. Um, and Western Kentucky, which is another great team. Um, we're, we're trying to play anyone that wants to play us right now. <laughs> it's tough with, with COVID and protocols and obviously everyone wants to stay safe. So they don't, they don't know how trustworthy we are and how and how safe we're trying to keep ourselves. So unfortunately we haven't had too many games thus far, but we are playing um, Italy, who is a team that will be at the Olympics. So we get to play them in four games um, later this month. So that's gonna be super fun. We have not played Italy since 2018. So it'll be a great little checkpoint um, and get, get some of those jitters out because we haven't played softball in a long time. So just playing some big games and getting really familiar with who we're going to play is going to be great for us. Kate, another question. Awesome. Are there any drills for us girls to do daily that improves as softball players? For example, throwing or hitting drills. Um, absolutely. I mean, I think the more you can just go out and do, the better you're going to be as a softball player because you learn from doing um and making adjustments I think drills um I think anytime you can just take a ground ball if you're an infielder or your outfielder um just getting really comfortable with seeing the ball and knowing where your eyes are with the ball hitting hitting and defense but I think sometimes we try to do so many drills that we lose the picture of the movement. So I love to do things that are very active and involve your whole move, your whole body moving. Because ultimately, if I can do this little one arm thing, if I can't do it in my swing, it doesn't matter. So I love to keep things really active um, and um, just be athletic through the movement. So, um, Transferring the ball is super important. I love any drill that involves getting the ball out of your glove really quickly because that's a skill that we don't often work on, but it's so, so important. So anything defensively where I'm focused, I have to get the ball out of my glove to, to throw it is really important. And um, I love drills that use, that work on your timing for hitting. Timing is so hard. And so I love drills where the coach will move and toss balls at different distances away. And so you have to focus on your timing and when you make contact. Um, I think those are some challenging things that aren't, aren't worked on enough at the lower level or at the younger levels um, that once you get older, really expose your abilities. So that's a great question. If you need any specific drills, you can ask me on in an email or on social media and I can try to help. Any more questions? These have been awesome questions. I appreciate you guys. Hey guys, just a reminder for everybody that's on the call, please make sure that you've typed your name into the chat so we can draw for some door prizes. Prizes. Everyone loves a good prize. Um, well, if you guys don't have any other questions, as you think, I'll just leave you with a few things. Oh, how much longer are you in Florida? So we are in, I'll give, I'll give you the scope of what we look like for the next little bit. Um, we're going on a few day break, um, which is just the next few days. And then we'll be in Florida until um, mid-May where we'll go and travel to Illinois where we compete as the Canadian Wild of Southern Illinois. They're a pro, we're, we partnered with a professional organization. And so we'll play a few games in Illinois and then we'll return to Florida, play um, for another two weeks. And then in early July, just at the very beginning of July, we'll head over to Japan. 
will make the long the long trip and play um, eight games against the professional teams there. So Japan has a really competitive professional league with some really great players that have um, offered to host us and play us. So we're super prepared um, for when the Olympics start. So we'll play about eight games and then we'll um, rest up. And then the Olympics are, are only five, hopefully six games if we do well. So um, it'll be over before we know it. And um, one game against each team, and it'll be it's, it'll be super competitive. But hopefully, we'll, we'll, it looks like we'll we'll play a number of games before then to be super prepared. But I'll leave you guys. I appreciate everyone's questions. Um, I'll leave you just with a few little nuggets of things I've learned that I I hope I could pass on to you guys. Um, the first one is, is my favorite quote from my coach in university, Coach Tar. She just, she used to preach to us, how you do anything is how you do everything. And so what does that mean? To me, when I was younger, it, it didn't really mean much. But now as I've gotten older and I've played the game a really long time, I've realized how important it is. So what does it mean? It means you can't just turn it on in life. You can't just turn it on when your coach is watching. You can't just turn it on when it's game time. You can't just turn it on when your teacher is watching over your shoulder. The game and the universe and everything, they know when you're not doing the right thing. So you got to be willing to work when no one's watching and um, do the right thing, even, even if it doesn't mean if it means it's more work or if it means it's, it's not as easy. So how you do anything is how you do everything. And the game is just a game. It's not who you are. And I encourage all of you to just find your passion in life. And I hope it's softball because I love softball and I think it's an awesome vehicle for learning and, and challenging yourself. But um, I think that's a great, Deshanel brought up that great question of if, if your parents are forcing you to do it or if whatever, make sure you're following what your heart is and whether that's, if that's softball, awesome. If it's something else, go be the best that you can be because our world needs more people loving what they're doing, so. Um, that's all I got. Thank you for the well wishes. I appreciate it so much. Um, you guys can feel free to reach out to me on social media. Um, my, I'll throw my Instagram and my Twitter in the chat. If you guys wanted to follow and ask any follow-up questions, I'm, I'm hoping I can be here as a resource. Um, we're definitely playing for you guys. We're thinking about you when we're playing, um, you guys are the future and, and hopefully there will be some some better opportunities when you guys when you guys have the opportunity uh, in in a few years. You guys got some time, but in a few years, I'm hoping there are some awesome opportunities for you too. But well, thank you very much for spending your birthday with us. We feel <laughs> honored, <laughs> and yeah, best of luck with the rest of this journey to the Olympics. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Victoria. You can stay or go. We're going to do our draw now, I think, for all our stuff. Awesome. I'll hop off. Thank you, guys. Okay, you guys are awesome. You. Go, Canada. <laughs> okay, so we are going to do our draw for our door prizes. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Thank you, Corey, for organizing. I'm glad we were able to get it figured out for this week. Okay, so has everybody entered all their everyone's name is in the in the chat. We're good. Everybody did it either at the beginning or the end. Okay, <clears throat> so we're just going to do for those that were here last time, the same as last time. And we are going to spin the wheel. And once you win once, we're going to remove your name. Okay. So first prize is $15 to Indigo. Let's see who wins. It's Caitlin Carroll. Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna remove you this time. Okay, next we're gonna do another prize of $15 for Indigo. And I will get, we'll figure out how to get these to you guys, okay? Okay, Sienna, yay. 
I'm writing it down this time. Last time I didn't, I had to guess. Okay. Next is $15 to Tim Horton. Oh. Albina, I think that's how you say it. Just writing it down, guys. Okay, and that Dairy Queen. Everybody loves Dairy Queen. Get yourself a couple blizzards. Kiana. I think the best part is the cheering. <laughs> okay, and then last one is $15 to Starbucks. Heather, yay! There we go. Okay, Jeff, do you want to say anything? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, joining us tonight and joining Victoria on our rescheduled <laughs> meet with the Victoria. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope everybody um, took like a pad full of notes like I did. And you're all going to write that in your book and uh, refer to that when uh, when you want to. So thanks very much again for joining us. And everybody have a good night. And it looks like good weather for this upcoming week. So looks like we've got four days of perfect weather. See you guys on the ball field. Yay.